hello and welcome back. And today, once again, we want to answer a very simple question. We want to know whether the Synology DS420 Plus is still worth your money and ultimately worth buying in 2021. This is the second of my series of these videos. And the reason I'm looking at this device is last year in 2020, around about spring, summertime, Synology launched or unveiled and launched their range of plus series devices. We've waited about two and a half years and it was four devices, a couple of two bays and a couple of four bays. Now, the reason I'm looking at this one today was this was a device that when it was released was kind of sandwiched between two devices. This is the DS420 Plus. It's an Intel Celeron dual core processor. It takes advantage of the J4025 CPU, an x86 Celeron with embedded graphics with 2.0 gigahertz uh, reported frequency per core, and that can be burst up to 2.9. It also arrives with two gig of DDR4 2660 six megahertz memory that can be upgraded to six gig weirdly um and it has a couple of nvme slots at the base it's a four bay nas so you've got a good amount of support things like raid 5 and shr as well as you've got um, btifs and it pretty much runs the gamut of the entire synology library of applications some better than others it also arrived at a price point that although it was more expensive than that of the two bays it was certainly more affordable than that of the DS920 Plus that came above it. And a lot of you, last year when it was launched, were looking at this device going, well, the 920 is knocking around for about 550, 600 nicker. That's a lot of money. What exactly has that got that this doesn't? And you looked at the pricing and you went, well, do you know what? This one's it's in the 400s. That's a decent little saving. I can add a few terabytes on there. And that was at launch. The two devices were released about, oh no, a month, month and a half apart, depending on where you are in the world. And ultimately... When it was launched, it did very, very well, and it still does to this day. It's still very much in their current lineup of Plus Series devices, but times move forward. And like any piece of technology that you buy, when you first see it, you go, oh, that looks cool, and you see the price tag, and you go, oh, that's not terrible. And then you find out when it was released, and a number of you are being slightly apprehensive about a solution to be purchased uh, in 2021, I'm recording this now in February, March 2021, um, and this device is, you know, coming up and three quarters of a year old. And whenever you're watching, it's probably closer to a year. And a number of you are just looking at that going, is that, is that still okay? Is it still okay to buy that in 2021? Is it as good as it was? Should I hold out for something new? Is there going to be a follow-up to this device? Is it still good enough for the money you're paying? Is it too expensive? Is it too cheap? Is there better things out there? And that's what we want to talk about in today's video. So first and foremost, let's talk about the price tag. Well, the price tag on this device has not actually gone down that much since launch. The price has gone down a little, and obviously where you shop around, the price will differ. But this device, unlike the DS920, the tier above it, has actually not gone down that much in price. It's all relative, of course, in terms of promos and in terms of prices and percentages. But a number of you must have noticed, if you've looked in the past, that the DS920 Plus has seen a number of discounts. It has been discounted or on deals and promos and different websites and more. And it keeps appearing uh, on special offers, flash special offers, but still nevertheless. And right now in 2021, it has to be said that if I was going to pick between these two, I would certainly pick the 920 because the price difference between them has shrunk to something like between 100 to 150 pounds. And you get um, you get a quad core CPU, you get double the memory, even maxing out to eight gig rather than six gig. You have a system that can be expanded in a way that the 420 can't. And right now in the middle of 2021, as good as I think this system is, it has to be said that for the hardware architecture and the price difference between them, although it was less of a factor at launch, now in 2021, the 920, I think it's just a better NAS overall and not only overall in terms of its hardware which was never in question but in terms of the value for money and what you're getting for it they've both got the nvmes they've both got Celeron, but this this device seems to just bring more of everything to the table and that's mainly in far as synology's um solutions are concerned because there's been more releases in the last you know three quarters of a year half a year whatever there has been a number of new synology plus series solutions a new six bay a new xs six bay there's been a new eight bay new five bay in the 1520 and because of that their portfolio kind of shifts around but the 420 hasn't really shifted that much 
And that, in many regards, can be considered a negative four. He's still a very, very good Nats and a very capable Nats. And if you're looking for a, a well-performing four-bay Nats, but you are on a tight budget, this is still better than any J-Series device out there. But in terms of that price tag, it has to be said that this device, I think, has weakened in its appeal because of its price tag a year later on in a way that hasn't affected other devices in the portfolio. Now, the other thing to bear in mind, as mentioned, is follow-ups, new devices, what's going to come after it, a uh, DS421+, plus, a 422+, plus. and I've mentioned this in other videos before, and it's, a, I think, a well-established fact, but some of you may not be aware of this. The release strategy of Synology, when it comes to a number of their units, does differ. You have some devices, such as their SMB series of, um, like their 8-bay devices, that are generally re released in a two to two and a half year cycle. The same is uh, said of the Plus series. Less so the Js and the budget devices, which generally a new refresh of that series will come a lot sooner. But in Plus series devices, generally you're looking at two to two and a half years between the devices. If you look at the portfolio of Synology releases, over the last decade or even two decades they've been in operation. If you average it out, uh, particularly in the last decade, it comes to about a new follow-up every two to two and a half years, which means this device hasn't even got clocked a year yet. So if the reason you're not buying this device or might not buy this device is you're looking to see if there's a follow-up on the horizon, it's not going to happen. There's probably the only way you're going to see a follow-up on this device, and I've touched on it in other videos, is because of that CPU. The CPU inside, uh, the Celera on there, uh, particularly the quad-core, uh, Intel have started talking about a refresh of that processor. And what that means in their terms is they move on to a newer version of it, and it's something we've seen before, where manufacturers have seen that CPU, a new version, arrive, and then what they do is they implement that new CPU. It'll be the same sockets and stuff like that, so it still goes into the existing hardware, but it's a different CPU, generally better as well, Intel improved things. We've seen it before uh, in the Braswell series that featured on the uh, 16 series from Synology. We've even seen it recently from the likes of QNAP in their uh, the J4000 series processor, where they upgraded a number of their solutions from the J4005 processor to the J4025 uh, processor there to a newer family because of the refresh. The reason I'm giving you this long, boring CPU story is although I don't think uh, a follow-up in the form of a DS421 Plus or 422 Plus on this device is going to be coming any time soon, I would say that there is a potential for a CPU refresh on this series. It's not impossible and it won't be till much, much later in the year. But that could lead to either uh, a DS420 uh, Plus 2, as we saw before on the DS916 and uh, 716 series, turning into a 716 Plus 2 and DS916 uh, Plus 2, which is a real m mouthful for me to say here on the channel. Or it could kickstart a newer version early. Now, the latter of those two options is the more unlikely of the two, I would say, and more likely is we will see a revision of this system. Some brands generally don't tell the end user that the CPU has had a refresh. And again, a few brands have done that where they've changed the CPU and just not told anyone. And then you look at the serial number and it turns out you've got the new CPU. It's almost like a like a potluck lottery thing. Synology generally will define the difference between series with a change in CPU. They're quite clear like that. So that's one way in which a new version of this will come out. But ultimately, whether it is that you're waiting on a newer version or you're hearing about this idea of a CPU refresh and thinking, ooh, if I keep an eye on that and hold on to my money for now, it's not worth it. It's really not worth it, largely because any of the stuff that I've described almost certainly would not happen uh, in terms of a refresh. It wouldn't happen until much, 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 much later in the year. We are talking August, September, something like that. And if there is a newer version, I can't imagine that happening until much later than that. We're talking September, October, etc. So because of that, the amount of time you might spend waiting, looking now, if you wait another four or five months or whatever, if you're looking for solutions now, that means there's a decent part of you that was thinking of patting down the money right now. And the money that you'd save by waiting that extra length of time, it just won't, it won't come back. So if you're looking at this solution, factoring in newer releases and factoring in a potential CPU refresh, 
it's not financially viable. If, if you're watching this video in the summer of 2021, we're talking like August, then maybe there is a bit of weight to be added to that, but not right now at the time of recording, no, I wouldn't bother. Um, and the only other reason is, let's be honest, the most clear cut uh, argument of whether you should buy this device in 2021 or not is simply value. Let's talk about whether this device still gives what you need in 2021 in terms of hardware. I'm sure it's been splashed on the screen. But the hardware inside this is still, well, I'm not going to use the word modest. I'm not going to talk about no ARM or Realtek CPU. But I will say this is still a device that only features one GBE. And it is a device that only has that dual core processor inside. And in 2021, the average cost of a lot of the hardware solutions we're seeing out there and the quality of some of the components we're seeing, I think this isn't as good value a, you know, from mid-year 2020 um, it's not as good now as it was then in terms of value. And I think, again, this unit here sells itself on being the earliest high-performance device that supports RAID 5 or SHR RAID 5-like architecture and the Synology DSM system at the best available tier. It's not the first 4 bay with the DS41A and the DS420J being uh, lower in the rung than this, but... Those are even, you know, they're great value boxes, but they're not high performing boxes. So if you're buying this because you like the Synology software and you want to concentrate on the storage as a better balancing act of your budget, then it's a good buy in 2021. But above and beyond that, if I'm in your shoes and I'm considering this in 2021, I'd maybe scrounge around, get the rest of the money, get a few less hard drives, you know, get two inside there and add some drives later and expand, knock a terabyte off per drive and get yourself the DS920+. Plus. It was less of a compelling argument last year at launch, but I argue right now if you're picking between, if you're looking at this device in 2021, make the jump. The 920 is definitely worth your money more this year. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's covered some of the points and concerns that you may have had when looking at this kind of solution right now for your home or business needs. If you are interested in learning more, there's lots of links in the description where I talk a lot more about now. It's not just these guys and ultimately help you understand how to make the most of your data. Otherwise, click like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to stay abreast of all of these things and more. And otherwise, I will see you next time.